Um, I'm Christopher Valdez. Actually, I'm Chris, but the symmetry wasn't working out, so I made it Christopher. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm at uh, Primer Gray. We're a web development and marketing agency um, here in Houston, uh, about two and a half, three years old. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at The Weather. And uh, this is Courtney. I'll let her introduce herself. <laughs> I'm Courtney. Um, I'm with 20 Caker for a strategic communications agency, also here in Houston. I've been with the company for a little over two years, but we've been around since 2001. Uh, you can find me at 20 K Courtney, and obviously Courtney's spelled a, a little wonky. <laughs> All right, so cool, that's us. Um, the, the first thing I always like to do is uh, find out about you guys. So just a show of hands, who's on the agency side? Anybody, agency, couple? Who's client side? I guess, uh, who's the client? Who has no idea what we're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, cool. Uh, I guess for us, you know, today's talk will be a little bit uh, from, from a variety of perspectives, um, whether you're an entrepreneur or an agency or employee at an agency or uh, you know, uh, working at, uh, at a client. <clears throat> so today, why are we here? Um, why on earth are we talking about this? Uh, it's not spiritual advice today, unfortunately. Um, maybe some warm fuzzies, but that's not really the point. Um, and we're not going to find a deeper, deeper understanding of the universe. Um, but we will hopefully talk about making uh, your work and your workplace and your work day more meaningful. Um, also talk about fostering a culture of do-gooders. We're going to use that word a lot. And, uh, uh, you'll, you'll get tired of hearing it, but hopefully uh, it, it helps us wrap our heads around an understanding. Um, and how to spot a do-gooder. So that's whether you're hiring an employee or you're hiring a client. Um, and then uh, why, why do I even care about this stuff? All right, so why should you listen to us, right? We're just two people up here. Um, so uh, as I guess a, a little bit about me, um, as every young professionally minded person uh, in early on in the career, um, I was an intern whore. I just was like, I'll intern anywhere that someone will let me intern. Um, and I was pretty selfish early on. Um, I was looking primarily for ways to make myself better at my job, knowing that ultimately, hopefully one day that would mean uh, that I'd have an opportunity to do the things that I, I found mo most meaningful and impactful. Um, I did the agency side stuff. I did the client side stuff. Um, and then one day I started my own company about two and a half years ago. <clears throat> but it was funny, it was a funny thing, even though I, I started to realize that, uh, or I, I thought I knew um, in starting my own company that that would mean, you know, I'd get to work on the projects that I wanted to work on and, and, you know, I'd be empowered and I'd find this great, you know, this great fulfilling existence. Um, it turned out not to be the case and it was actually uh, three years later now, uh, or two and a half, I should actually do the math so I don't have to keep saying the two different things. Um, we're barely, I guess we're finally moving in a direction um, towards something that's reflective of those personal interests or those, uh, those things that I find to be uh, worthy social causes. Um, and that was a progression, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. Um, all right, oh, sorry. I oh gosh, I forgot my slide. Wow. Uh, we're well rehearsed, obviously. Um, yeah, you should listen to me because my head's abnormally large. <laughs> Um, or not, and, I, and actually, yeah, <laughs> delayed. Um, and actually, the the point on this slide is that uh, this really this really is us sharing our experiences, and it is just that. Um, you know, obviously, for everyone, every every experience will be different. All right. So, what about her? Um, the reason we're taking the time to tell y'all a little bit more about our. I have a missile pen over here, apparently. And we're running really smoothly. Um, so the reason we're taking this time to tell you more about us is because this whole presentation is really personal um, to both of us, I think. These are um, the, the how to make your business and fulfill your do-gooder um, addiction or penchant. Um, it's something we've talked a lot about personally with our friends um, and tried to figure out on our own. So that's why we're going into our little brief histories. Um, mine is that I spent most of my 20s on this um, little exploration of how I could find myself and save the world while, while I was doing it. Yeah, so, <laughs> or try. Um, 
So went to the Peace Corps for three years and um, did mostly community health education and HIV AIDS awareness. Loved it, decided, okay, international development work is my calling. This is what I'm meant to do. And this is how I can live a life that is meaningful to me. So moved to New York to get a master's degree in international nonprofit. Um, while I was there, worked on like post-conflict uh, peace building, which is like how to recover after a conflict, wrote policy papers on um, how to stop wars from reoccurring, basically. Found a lot of fulfillment in that and then decided, okay, I'm gonna go to refugee camp. Like, that's my life's dream now. I'm gonna go work in a refugee camp for the rest of my life or until I find a new dream or fulfillment. Um, but life happens, right? So. That's, uh, I didn't jump on a plane and go to the Congo like I thought I would. I um, actually ended up moving back to Houston. Um, had some family stuff happen and decided to move down and become a part of the family business, which is 20K Group. So 20K Group was actually founded by my mom. Um, definitely not what I thought I would be doing, PR. And um, I spent a lot of my first year struggling thinking maybe I sold out. Like, um, I was a year before researching like how natural resource exploitation can cause conflict. And now I was working for clients who were oil and gas companies. And that was, a, that was an interesting development. Um, and about a year after working at 20K Group, I kind of came to the conclusion that my own fulfillment and happiness was already existing in there. I just needed to view it in a different way. So I needed to find the do-gooder in our clients and in our business. And so that's a lot of what we're gonna be talking about is both of our paths and finding out how to integrate and balance those two things. As Chris said, these are just our experiences. Um, so while we think we're pretty special, um, they're not universal for sure. Um, we're not your pastor, we're not your guru, we're not going to be your therapist today, but we hope that by speaking from our experiences that you'll be able to find something in the next 45 minutes that is helpful in finding your own fulfillment in business. Oh, sorry. So we talked a little about why we're special, right? But come to find out, we're actually not all that special in wanting to do good. Um, yeah. For Gen Y, studies have shown that fulfillment matters, and it matters a lot. Um, can you keep going? Mm -hmm. um, this was a 2006 study, so Chris and I technically aren't Gen Yers, um, but probably skew more on that side culturally and values-wise um, than the Gen Xer. What are you, personality maybe? Um, so in 2006, the study said that 61% of 13 to 25 year olds feel personally responsible for making a difference in the world, that they really thought their actions could change the world. And that's a pretty big shift in, in, in our understanding of community and um, impacting good, if you will. And also, one thing that we figured out today was this, in 2006, we actually fell into this category, the 13 to 25 year old category. So these are us, <laughs> these people are us. They're our employees, they're um, our future workforce. And it's becoming more and more important uh, for your employees and for entrepreneurs and clients to find that good. One of the things that we've talked about with Gen Yers is why. Why do they feel a greater sense of good? Um, and what does that mean? And part of it is that it's not good enough anymore to go sit in your desk, clock in, clock out, and be okay with the paycheck, and then go live your life after five. Because frankly, how many of y'all actually leave the office at five? Zero, <laughs> zero percent. <laughs> None of us, right? We're living our, our jobs to a large degree. Um, and so most of us, or a lot of us, need to figure out some sort of purpose for what we're doing eight to eight, or whatever, eight to four, some night, you know, eight to four in the morning, I mean, <laughs> um, some, some days. So that's a big driver in this do-gooder culture. The other thing is we have access to information, right? We ha are constantly flooded in with images of famine and 
you know, this corporation had a big scandal, you know, the, the AIGs and the Enrons, you know, and that's not being good enough for us anymore. Like, we can't put the blinders on and just pretend that we don't know better because we're seeing it on Twitter in real time. We're seeing it on CNN, um, you know, revolutions happening in real time. So it's definitely changed the world. Um, and then it's more than Gen Wires. So we're, we're generalizing in this today that it's about Gen Wires, but it's more than that. 20K was founded by my mom because after 30 years in corporate, the corporate world, she was pretty disillusioned with what she had seen um, and ethically in a lot of ways. Um, so formed the company to kind of do it her own way and do it in a way that she saw as doing better. So all that to say, like these are issues that we see facing entrepreneurs and employees um, and that are important drivers to our businesses, successes and personal fulfillment. Um, for the next 40 minutes or so, we're gonna get into how you can do good in your business. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so kind of, I guess, uh, a setup here for us. Um, we uh, wanted to frame things in, uh, in this spectrum, it actually helps uh, to define these terms early on. Um, so we call it the spectrum of do-gooding chimes. <laughs> and trademarked. And trademarked, <laughs> not for real, guys. Um, so we developed the spectrum here um, in our secret laboratories. Uh, of kind of the left, the left side here is is the person on uh, that you know is is not doing anything. You know, it's uh, it's kind of a status quo situation. I, I don't really have a care to do anything actively. I don't really um, share any kind of interest in in uh, in sustaining a common good of any sort. Um, and then you have the second level here, which is. I have a common respect. For, I have a respect for the common good, which means that you know I'm not going to take on a client that is you know a, a known terrible person without naming any names. Um, I I'm not going to uh, you know we're going to recycle in our office because it's the right thing to do for the environment. Um, it's a fairly passive role in terms of do-gooding. You step up to the next step, and you've got someone that's well. You know, we we work with a lot of good folks. We got we work with a lot of people who are well intentioned, and sometimes we're able to help them do good. It's not a full time thing that we're committed to 100%. It's not a, a criteria for the people that we'll work with or the people that we'll hire, but it is uh, it's something we're mindful of, and we're slightly more active in it. And then you have the, the furthest end of the spectrum there, which is we will only work with great high impact causes. We will only hire people that are committed to the same set of organizational values that we have. Um, and so we have, uh, we have that spectrum, and everyone is going to find themselves on a different place in the spectrum, obviously. Um, and that's, that's sort of a personal or a corporate choice um, that each individual or each company makes on their own. Um, but this kind of gives us a construct within which to talk about or to even evaluate yourself or your company um, in terms of where you are or where you'd like to be. Um, for us at Primer Gray, this kind of process is, is pretty organic. It's kind of shoot from the hip, sort of trust our gut, um, in the sense that you know, a project lands on, you know, someone, someone approaches us about something, we kind of evaluate it at that moment. Um, in contrast, um, Courtney is, is at 20K working really hard about a, a defined and purposeful objective of one day being at the furthest end of the spectrum. Um, and so, like I said, it's, it's kind of a personal choice for each and every one of us. Um, so that said, it's kind of, well, how do you find a do-gooder? Right, so say you've decided that you want to fall maybe closer on the right side of the spectrum, or you're already there, um, and you've decided you want to work with clients who do some modicum of good, right, at some level. Maybe they're not like the ultimate Susie, I don't know, goody two-shoes that never makes any mistake, because those don't exist. Toms. <laughs> Toms. Um, which get a lot of criticism, you know, are you, you, yeah, we'll talk about them later a little Sorry, bit. Very, <laughs> um, so you decide this is something you want to do. How do you spot a do-gooder? So you're out there developing business, you're having potential client meetings, putting proposals out there. What are some, some things to look for? Um, one's transparency. This is a super... <laughs> CSR, corporate social responsibility buzzword, right? You hear about transparency all the time. And sometimes when people talk about CSR, it's only about transparency. But we see it as a lot more. It's a great thing, but you need to be 
to be better and doing more than just um, just being open about your financials or um, we made a mistake. Like I work in crisis uh, management, issues management. So we always say, if you make a mistake, own up to it immediately and tell the truth, you know, throughout the entire process. If you have an oil spill, tell the truth about it. What happened? Own up to it. But it's more than that. You have to be transparent and be open and honest before then, in my opinion. Um, openness to change and improvement. This is a little bit of like change management theory, right? We want to work with people who are open to doing better, you know, can identify some of the things that they're not okay with or that they're doing that's not super great and want to be better, but also be willing to actually implement what they need to do to make those changes happen. It's great to have um, really awesome intentions, but it's not going to matter if you're not doing something about it. Um, conscientiousness. That's just understanding how your business or your employees, your culture and operations impact the community. So believing that your business is a member of the community and has effects locally, globally, um, internally, you know, whether your employees are happy and understanding um, your policies and culture, how that's impacting the people who work with you. High standards for social engagement kind of permeates all the things we've talked about, like not being okay with dumping some sludge in the ocean, but then making a donation, right, to, uh, I don't know, Buffalo Bayou Partnership, for example. <laughs> um, not naming names for anything there. Um, so.